Hello, everybody. Um, let's get straight into the discussion today. Um, we're here to talk about the Lean Transformation Framework, and um, we've been working on this for a number of years now as part of the Lean Global Connection. We thought it would be useful to share some of this work. And I'm joined today by two of my colleagues from the Lean Enterprise Academy in the UK, uh, Peter Watkins and David Marriott, and by John Shook, who um, I've termed for this um, uh, for these purposes. He's the, he's the chief architect of the Lean Transformation Framework. Is that is that uh, is that right, John? Um, let, let's start with a simple question, John. Um, tell us what the Lean Transformation Framework is. Well, let's dive right into kind of a, I don't know if it's a difficult question or not, but it does have a, some, an evolution, you know, to it. It did, did, did not really happen overnight. Um, you know, I worked for Toyota for a number of years, as did uh, David, who's on the, uh, he's here with us. Uh, and then uh, left in 94, started working with companies uh, and, and, and students at the university to understand uh, and do this. And part of me felt like no one will ever get this. But part of me felt like, oh, this is totally doable. Uh, companies were already doing it, right? Uh, by that time, Machine That Changed the World, the book was out, and many companies were, you know, having success going about this. But there were also many, many problems that you could see in it as well. Uh, and then a few years goes go by, uh, maybe ten or so. By the early 2000s, it's very clear that companies and individuals are struggling. There's a lot of P, not PDCA, not, not adjust, but uh, abandonment going on where companies would start to try this and then it didn't work and it was program of the month. Uh, and this was disrupting lives and it was very painful to many people and companies were, you know, no, no new Toyotas were emerging as we thought, as we naively thought early on might, might happen. Um, so then we're all learning. We're seeing a lot of failures uh, happen, and we're also continuing to refine our understanding of what Toyota had done, which was the inspiration for 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 <clears throat> for lean production and lean lean enterprise. Uh, and uh, conversations with folks, including globally, as the lean uh, global network was forming, uh, had had formed at that time, uh, just showed that 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 something could be could, something useful. Uh, could be powerful and helpful to 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 a lot of people. So uh, what we see here on the screen is in the form of a house because we're bar borrowing it from Toyota. Um, I think the important thing is the questions, which is they're also kind of borrowed from Toyota, but not but not not only that. So really, as we're looking at where things were, myself, but also I guess you could call me the chief architect. But one implication of that is that I'm not doing, wasn't doing this on, on, on my own, even in, at the point of, of developing it, but certainly not since then, as we've all learned about it, and many people and organizations uh, have, have used this. But a kind of a failure mold analysis, FMEA at the organization transformation level, uh, showed that uh, a couple of things, that these were the key issues, these five these five uh, the questions dealt with key issues. And the underlying, what I thought anyway at the time, was of the, the failure mode that was most important and actionable. Now, there may be additional failure modes as far as, as, as some, some things have to, very, have to do with very deep uh, mindset uh, that pervade organizations. But what could be actionable was the fact that so many organizations were trying to do lean for the sake of doing lean. They'd read a book that said, this is great. Uh, and they start doing it. So they mandate we're all going to do lean without a clear sense of purpose. So how could we then give people something that they could use that would break through this trying to this copycat syndrome, which I to, to this day think is kind of the biggest failure mode. We're trying to copy someone else. No one can be Toyota. What you can do is get at the thinking and then design your own lean system. What that means is going from the tools or any kind of dogma to what people often go to nowadays is first principles. If you go to Silicon Valley, everyone's all about first principles, not dogma first principles. It makes perfect sense. But even first principles can become dogma. You need to go down to the basic fundamental questions that we're trying to address. And so that's what the, uh, led to the development of these questions and what we can, what we you know now call the lean transformation framework, uh, or we or what I originally called the lean transformation model. And I changed the name really just to try to, again, break through this sense that here's a model that you must follow. But we believe there is no 12 step you know, the model that every organization can follow. You need to work through these questions 
And the answer, how you answer those then will lead you to developing your own lean system and making it yours that is that is that is directed towards solving your organization problems, uh, I think uh, is the key. And I think, Dave, and, uh, you know, the work that we've done throughout the Lean Global Network uh, verifies that as we continue to learn more about the nuances of it, you know, breaking it down, peeling away la- levels of the onion, layers of the onion, we're learning more and more about it. So that's kind of where it came from. Okay, so so the so the the problem you were trying to solve was to help people be more effective with their efforts. Is that is is that right? Or or it, yeah, it's probably a bit even, even more deep than that, really. Well, hopefully, we'll be more effective. But to break through some of the barriers, I think that we're preventing people to even understand it uh, right. as as they should. If you see it as a set of steps or just a set of tools to apply, uh, you're going to have uh, you're going to have problems. I think early on we wanted the tools, we needed them. And I think there was an awareness by the mid 90s that we needed the entire system. Yep. But then actually we need the underlying thinking or you'll always be developing a system that doesn't really necessarily fit exactly uh, your situation. So how can we get at the thinking uh, and how can we develop our own thinking? Uh, that's appropriate to bringing into play systems of this sort, a lean system uh, to your enterprise or to your work. I should say to your work. The thing is, when we start thinking about the enterprise, it's so big. Every single one of the things I love about this, about about lean thinking, but also this way of thinking about it, is that every single individual individual can apply this to their own work. So if you're a CEO, you apply it at the enterprise level. If you're the head of product development, you can apply it to product development as, an, as, a, as a function, as a silo. If you're the head of janitorial, janitorial services, you can apply it to the work that you do. Or if you're an individual, any individual can also apply it to their own work. And I think that's the, an, an important insight that, that I think we're trying to just uh, bring to bear as we do our work day by day. Right. Great. OK, so so let's bring Pete and Dave into the into the discussion. Um, as you just said, you know, the, the, uh, prior to them both working at LEA, they uh, they both had day jobs, um, probably far more stressful day jobs than they have now. Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> all debatable. Um, so let's start with Dave and, and then and then Peter. Dave, after you left Toyota, um, why did you? Uh, use the LTF and what did you get get from it? And yeah, so um, yeah, I think I joined GKN corporate side of things around about 2008, and um, between 2008 2012, we've done a lot of work on kind of uh, people development, a lot of training, um, predominantly in the tools as you kind of mentioned, John. Um, so I was part of the the kind of team that was um, helping with that um, to develop sort of people in. Um, understanding what the tools and, and, you know, hopefully applying them. But it was only when I kind of came out of the corporate role, so I went into one of the divisions, um, and that was the, the land systems uh, division, so off-highway kind of product, um, that realised that we'd not really articulated to the people what we wanted them to do in terms of applying those tools and, and you know, with lean thinking and practice. Um, you know, that from a divisional point of view we got a number of challenges at the time and we weren't great in terms of customer quality um consequently were you know profitability challenges as well um but also there was kind of like uh, i wouldn't say a problem with safety but certainly uh, attitudes around safety um so you know we'd all understood the, the safety results and they were fine but in terms of the the process and behaviors about the approach to safety was you know some challenges there so, I mean, what I did at the time was, you know, this is our attempt to try and explain to the division what, what we wanted them to do. Um, actually, it's read from the bottom upwards. Um, we, we weren't really aware or familiar with the, with the LTF, um, as that wasn't widely known at the time, 2012 to us. But um, looking at the foundation, so there was a big push in terms of getting accurate data um, and visualising how those processes were, were performing and implementing what we kind of call um, management control, which is probably part of the management system aspects of the, the LTF, but just to understand, you know, day to day, we winning or losing and how we were reacting to that. Um, and then obviously highlighting the gaps and sort of some of the immediate problems to to solve. Um, obviously, by doing that, we, you know, 
hopefully achieve some kind of level of stability that then allows us to to put the standard work in place which is the i suppose the kind of the old tps um house and, and model moving up the pillar on the, on the left so we wanted to get people to build in quality because we've got the, the quality challenge so we make that sort of front of mind not pass on bad work um whilst also looking at the right the, the flow value um in terms of all levels of the business in terms of the way that that work was being done whether it's the individual right through to the you know value stream level and then the sort of um, extended flow both in the shop floor and also the office actually as well so we're trying to look at the work at all levels in in both uh, environments inside the, the the house should we call it you know we will sort of try to articulate some of the key behaviors we want people to demonstrate whilst doing this um to try and achieve those the things that we see on the roof so that you know providing that value for the customers um obviously making a profit or else we're not going to exist um but obviously with this safety first thinking way as well so we're trying to um, bring that forward so uh, suppose those were the trying you know the kind of things that we we were trying to solve those were the problems to our situation um rather than just thinking blindly about you know we need to go and do 5s and we need to go and do change over reduction and we need to map all the value streams um so it's by no means perfect but i think at least start to provide people with an approach to apply the lean thinking of practice in mm -hmm. the division to our situation um and although you know there, there are some parallels it's not exactly aligned but certainly when i saw the ltf that certainly struck a chord with me in terms of those fundamental questions that you need to ask you know in your situation and then reflecting back at Toyota you were thinking well yeah those are the kind of questions you were thinking in the back of your mind when you're a supplier and faced with with some of the problems and challenges so great. that, that was great. me really great Pete yeah okay so yeah mine's a little bit different um, I think John I think you probably uh, backed me up on this when I joined Delphi uh, Delphi was maybe one of the earlier adopters of lean thinking and practice. Yeah, I think they were written up in some of the books, uh, original books, uh, and they won a lot of Shingo awards and things like this. Yeah, so uh, joining that organisation, uh, uh, it was a good chance to use the LTF framework to understand what the gaps were in the approach, and it revealed quite a lot of things. So Delphi was quite a process focused or what they call an operating system. Yeah, uh, organization. So they define their processes very well, especially in manufacturing, uh, especially. Uh, and also they had some very challenging uh, business uh, results uh, to achieve yeah, due to the environment when I joined. And what we discovered using the LTF to ask the, ask the questions was, uh, was that, uh, yes, we had good processes, but we weren't good at the uh, understanding how to improve the work. Yeah. Uh, to get the right results, and the reason was that was uh, was the fact that the the we did some uh, initial data around people's capabilities, uh, especially the leaders to start with, uh, and this was very very low on problem solving capability in the organisation, which surprised everybody because we'd had a rich history of uh, even some Japanese uh, gurus from Toyota coming in and training people, but. Why that failed was because we had uh, the underlying thinking was that the leaders weren't the teachers and coaches of others. Uh, so we had experts come in, trained individuals, but the expectation wasn't there that they went on to coach and teach others. Yeah. So then we ended up with this situation where we got, uh, uh, you know, very low capability across the board from team members to uh, leadership. And what happened then was that we were firefighting and containing problems and not solving them, which was adding more cost into the business, not take away, not taking away the cost. Yeah. So using the LTF here shown on this slide is the an A3 that we use to uh, look at the the performance of the business and what uh, what the gap was on the uh, cost reduction we needed to do. And then we're using the LTF framework, which is a version that we came up with in Delphi to uh, integrate into our operating system, looked at the gaps. And the main gap was we need to get problem solving, the leaders understanding problem solving and leading that into the organization, teaching, coaching others. And the result from the activities from this then was we trained up initial 200 leaders in the first sort of year and a half. Uh, they went on to coach and teach others. And just from the initial training alone, because it was done through learning by doing, we saved over $6 million in the first year and a half just from doing practical problem solving 
and getting that going in the organisation. Um, that's my learning from it. Great. Um, yeah, I, I've, I, I was thinking about this and um, I mean, it was way back in 1998 when Dan asked me to research if lean thinking and practice was applicable in car retail. And, um, you know, we found it quite strange that that was the point closest to the custom of the car industry, but we didn't really see any evidence of things that at the time we associated with lean, you know, um, all of the all the bits in in TPS really, and um, we've conducted a lot of experiments in retail in car retail, and I tend to use that as a constant in in the research that we that, that we do, and it seemed like a good place to test the LTF. And I was lucky at the time to be working with Terry O'Donoghue, who'd had senior positions in Toyota South Africa prior to retiring from the company. And both of us saw the need to balance in developing lean thinking and practice in the organisation. And so we just tried some experiments. And one of the things that became obvious was this piece around the purpose being about mobility, customers' mobility. So what was the work to do? Well, in terms of servicing, um, quite often you drop your car off at seven in the morning or eight in the morning and you only get it back at five o'clock. So what would it take? What was the work to be done to actually keep customers more, more, more mobile? And we worked out that the vast majority of work um, could be done in half an hour while you waited. And so then we had to say, well, OK, but what capability do we need to be able to do that, to to be able to do that work to resolve this mobility issue? So we, we had to teach them about flow. and We had to teach them about standardizing the work and making that work repeatable, actually to stream it into different lanes, you know, not to mix predictable and unpredictable work up and so on. And then, and then obviously the next question was, well, okay, but what about the management system? Well, of course, the management system's got to be able to spot problems straight away so that we can sort out these problems so that the flow can carry on. And, and because there's another cu customer coming in all the time and, you know, and it's not like we can have a buffer of end finished cars and give a customer something else. They want their car to go back home in and, uh, and all that kind of thing. And, and all of the time we were, you know, we were also then challenged in that industry by the underlying thinking, which is that if you're selling more, you're making more money. So the upsell, you know, the, these guys want to upsell everything rather than actually provide ongoing value for people so that actually you're making their lives easier and then they're coming back. And, you know, that's that that. that you know, that's well documented on Planet Lean, on LGN's Planet Lean um, um, website that we that, that we did. And um, and I just thought it was just so obvious, really, that, that those five questions were just so logical. And yet, actually, as you say, most people are worrying too much either about the tools or they, they flip between the over-reliance on the tools or the over-reliance on the, uh, the, 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 the soft skills, or, you know, the, the, the people skills. And then when they flip between those two, then they flip over to, oh, yeah, but my boss doesn't get it. And so, yeah. so they've always got an excuse for, for not doing something. And this provides the perfect opportunity. At thinking about the, the individual, the, those five dimensions provides the perfect um, opportunity to be able to to do this much more effectively. Jo John, how have you found people using the framework? I mean, you know, you, you've been you've been walking walking around loads and loads of places. I mean, um, have you got good some good stories about people using this type of stuff? Well, I think that was a great example. Actually, the three that we just looked at are pretty interesting. Um, and it's 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 the 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 halfway example is one where you more explicitly went through uh, the questions and let that lead to certain development then of of, of a system. I, there there is such a mindset that we want solutions and that we want uh, black and white solutions and we want them right away. 
So even if you look at some of the things that you wrote you, that you had there in halfway, underneath each one of those good things, whether you look at at at, uh, at, at David's example, uh, or at, at Peter's, or, or or even the good things that you that you had listed under the halfway example, they all come from some underlying assumption. So what is that underlying assumption? So if you have the right set of assumptions, some of these things are easy, just totally logical, totally mm -hmm. logical. Yeah. And why would you not, why would you not do this? But there's often uh, some underlying assumption that's working against you. The one you gave, Dave, was 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 a very good one. Uh, that the belief there at halfway was you want to upsell to get more margin, and okay, you can do that. So it depends on your purpose. It depends on the problem you're trying you're trying to solve. So it, it's I think it's important to, to to recognize in this as well that these questions are totally agnostic. These are really questions of enterprise character, not just transformation, not just lean, lean transformation. You can answer them any way you want. So I spent some time lately, like in the startup world, um, and there's nothing I'm going to say that's exactly wrong about the desire of an ent some entrepreneur to come up with a new product uh, that has a high margin, you know, kind of what maybe what is, is halfway was trying to upsell and make a lot of money become a billionaire and retire in three years and buy an island, you know, in the you know, the South Pacific and go there. They can do that if they want. But if that's your purpose, that's not going to be consistent with all the things we're talking about at all. So lean thinking, it, these questions are agnostic. Lean thinking is not agnostic. Lean thinking has a point of view that informs how to think about each of these questions. So what is it when we say purpose, we add the words value driven purpose because that is at the heart of lean thinking. And this is thanks to uh, uh, the lean thinking book, uh, Jim Womack, Dan Jones, 1996, I think it was with this this focus on value. Some people in lean world are still confused about that. So, well, Ty H. Owner never talked about value. Well, no, he didn't because he was building stuff where other people had already defined the value. Focusing on value is what the product development people did, working with the people in sales to understand what customers need. Then you want to build that with the least possible waste. So uh, most people read Taichiono's books before diving in and thinking about the entire enterprise. But there's some fund fundamental thinking. We have a value-driven purpose. Now, what problems are we trying to solve to fulfill that value-driven purpose? If you back up with a question throughout there using lean thinking to inform your answer, you will develop a, lean, a, a, a wonderful, a perfect lean system that will fit your situation. Well, as soon as you start focusing on the things to be done, which are logical things to do, <laughs> then you're going to be in a copycat syndrome as well. So this under the number five is difficult to get at, but it's very critical. I, they, the example you gave was a very good one. And what we can do as we're going around is we can look for those kind of mismatches between what we say we're trying to do, going back to the Delphi example that Peter mentioned, there was incredible work done on the operational level. Incredible is the Delphi uh, manufacturing system, I think they called it. Uh, Ford had the Ford production system that I, would, that I had been involved in. And these were all, to, to, to some, the Ford production system was met copying the tools without understanding the system dynamics and understanding the under, underlying thinking. I think that the work that Delphi did was, was uh, beyond that, however, there was a mismatch between the company purpose as defined when it spun off from General Motors and developing a long-term successful business that focuses, focused on customers. That mismatch was always going to be there until finally the company went through the, you know, the, the, the bankruptcy of, uh, of, uh, of the Great Recession. Uh, and then it came out of that. And I think after that, Peter, is when, is, is when you joined. So we're looking for these sort of these, these disconnects, these mismatches. And we can do that by focusing on the questions. And as David Marriott said, this was another insight that led to developing this. This was exactly the thinking that I had been exposed to in my years at Toyota. If ever in, in Toyota, when you're working on a problem, first of all, whatever you're working on, is, is you're asked, what problem are you trying to solve and why? Why are you trying to solve that? And if you ever say, because, oh, page 20 of our standard operating <laughs> system manual says do this, you go back to square one. That is never an acceptable answer. It has to be. Here's the problem I'm trying to solve. Here's why. Here's the connection with the purpose of our group, of our team. And here's what I'm doing to solve that using PDCA. Then you're on a path to not only make the improvements, but also a, a learning path. 
So these were the exact questions that we would take. The last job I had with Toyota was doing the supplier development, TPS at different companies, not just suppliers. And there's where it became very clear that if you walk in looking for the application of tools, you can find them or you can not find them, but that will take you nowhere in terms of establishing lean, lean thinking. You have to go back to why does this factory, why does this dealership exist? What are they trying to do? What's their purpose? And as you went through the logic, Dave, of the questions, then what's the work they need to do that? Do they have the capabilities to do that? Uh, yes or no. How you develop the capabilities? What's the basic thinking? Well, we have basic thinking about how you develop capability. Was this learned through doing? It's not just through books. That's lean thinking that is a point of view regarding the answer to the question. And then the same applying then to the management system and 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 the leader behaviors. Underneath it all, there's always this question of, of, of thinking, which is hard to get at. But you look for those examples exactly like the one, Dave, that you, you mentioned a moment ago. So if you do that, I think, you know, you can develop rational systems that can fit your purpose as an overall organization or for just for your uh, for, for your work team. So, so I suppose, you know, one of the one of the big challenges for us in the Lean Global Connection is articulating the Lean Transformation Framework. And, and you know, there are a, var a variety of things being done across the Lean Global Network to, to, do, to do that. Um, and I suppose that's where, um, you know, it's really important to, to talk about the Lean Global Connection and some of the things that we're going to be doing across the uh, across that 24-hour period, and also some of the wider things that different institutes are doing. I mean, you know, in in our case, um, we've got you know LEA of you know for for years, Dan and uh, and you know and, and the team have we've we've been thinking through why don't people just get this, you know, and therefore we've been trying different experiments to to see how we could get people to get this more effectively, really. Um, and so we're using it in a variety of ways, the LTF. Um, we've developed these materials, these learning materials around LTF on, online, on the online platform. Um, and, um, you know, we see them helping fulfill an important role pertaining to the centre of the house, you know, in terms of creating the management system and the leaders being the teachers and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and... And we've we've been also been taking um, stuff uh, like the, uh, the, the the teach posters. So so the, so the, this idea of rather than hundreds and hundreds of slides, can we distill this down um, so that leaders are able to teach it? I don't know, Dave, whether you want to add anything to that. Yeah, I mean, we just like you say, it's trying to get that hand off to leaders to to grasp the nettle or take the baton and say, well, it's, you know, it's your role really to to teaching coach others not some department or division or special unit and um, that's sort of drafted in so like I say we've been trying to <clears throat> distill and, and really try and simplify the the method um, and, and articulate the message onto a one piece of paper that can be used practically you know in the workspace or you know either online as well um, for, for those leaders to really pick that up and, and teach and coach others um, and we found this poster concept, as we call it, um, you know, the most effective way uh, at the moment than, like we said, a, a big long PowerPoint slide deck and sit in a, sit in a classroom or behind your screen and an hour later you, you're falling asleep. So, uh, so yeah, we're trying to trying to simplify and put materials together in a, a simple format for people to use. Yeah, yeah, we're always on the lookout for new partners to work work with as well, you know, and to to continue to test and 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 as john said earlier go deeper in the application of of uh, of ltf and you know we've got some pressing issues that we know we can apply this type of stuff to such as the environmental challenge and the productivity challenge thanks guys excellent thank, thank you. you for this event we've developed several sessions on the lean transformation framework that are shown here please attend them to learn more about applying lean thinking and practice using the LTF questions. The Lean Enterprise Academy is a non-for-profit organisation which partners with companies to research on how to apply lean thinking and practice to solve their situational problems. If you want to partner with us or learn more about the LTF, please contact us on our website or at info at leanuk.org.